Welcome to the Hunt Fish Travel Podcast, the show that works really, really hard to interview folks that are going to provide you the information and inspiration for your next hunting or fishing trip. I'm your hostess, Carrie Z. Before we jump into the show, I'd like to remind you that Spy Point is the show's biggest sponsor, helping me keep the lights on. So be sure to check out the Hunt Fish Travel Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter page for Trail Cam Tuesday picks. New for this year is both Radians Outdoors and Costa Sunglasses. Both have been incredibly supportive of the show over the years, and this year they officially came on as sponsors. This episode is also brought to you by Montana Decoy, my secret weapon for bagging both turkeys and deer. Check them out at montanadecoy.com. And of course, by Cabela's. Check out huntfishtravel.com slash huntingcabela's for a list of the products I've purchased to use this year. Also new this year is the swag I have for sale. How can you get your hands on a free shirt? (laughs) Well, I'm glad you asked. If you're listening on an Apple device, go to Apple Podcasts. If you're listening on an Android device, go to Spotify and leave me a five-star review. At the end of each month, I'll draw a random winner from all the reviews for that month and send off a t-shirt. If you're perusing HuntFishTravel.com, please sign up for the newsletter that I send out once a month because I'll be choosing monthly winners for that as well from some swag that I do have from all of these very generous sponsors, so you're not going to want to miss out on that. Now, on to the show. Welcome back to another episode of the Hunt Fish Travel Podcast. As always, I am your hostess, Carrie Z. This week, we are talking with some TV folks. We've got the Challenge Outdoors on the line. We have Brad Frost and Scott Carroll, who are the co-hosts of the Challenge Outdoors. And we also have Dave Moore, who is the field producer for the show. So really excited because usually I just have one person, but now I've got all three of you so I can ask all the questions that nobody ever wants to answer for me. So you guys, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks for having us. Thanks. Okay, let's start out by, you guys are a TV show, so where can they watch you? Because by the end of this interview, I'm sure they're going to be like, these guys are awesome, we have to tune in. So tell them where you can watch you and then a little bit about how the Challenge Outdoors got started and how you came to be a TV show in general. All right. Well, right now we're currently running on Waypoint Television and Waypoint Digital. Uh, We start back up in July. We run third and fourth quarter. And Waypoint uh, is featured on most all of your streaming networks, such as uh, and Tubi and Sling and Peacock and, you know, just the whole gamut of them. Uh, it's really an up-and-coming channel. Uh, the guys have been great to work with, and we're excited to be working with them. Uh, before that, we were on Pursuit for three or four years. Before that, we were on Fox Sports South for several years. And we actually started off just on, as a local network. Yeah, we started in uh, 2004. Just uh, I think we ran over there locally for – three or four years, and then we heard about uh, Fox Sports South, which was a big step for us. There was a lot more viewers and a lot more money, but, you know, we were trying to grow the grow the program, so it was just the, the you know, next possible step, and then from there we went to Pursuit Channel. But we got started way back in 2004, kind of on a trip to Africa, and I'm over there passing up animals because Brad can't get them on camera. I mean, video and inside the blind back in my head. When he finally tells me he's got the shot, you know, the animals run off. And I'm like, what are you doing? I mean, you're over here like, I mean, this is our second trip to Africa, you know, so it ain't, you know, and you never know. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'm like, what am I doing? So that just got me thinking. I was like, nobody's paying us to do this. You know, this is for fun. So over the, you know, (laughs) few days left of that trip in the next several months i've just been thinking about it and asked brad what he thought about me back then we, we started doing uh dvds and vhs you can go back that far but um asked him what he thought about it and he liked the idea and i liked the idea so, so you talk to your family about it and uh, i'll talk to my family and friends and you know we'll pray about it and so we just kind of let it go for about a month we got back together heading hunting and I was like, Oh, did you ever speak to your family about it? And he's like, Yeah, he said, You do the same? I said, Yeah. I said, How many people told you you were crazy? I said, None of them. He said, None of them. I said, Well, same with me. I said, I, You know, they're all like, We all love to, you know, y'all get along great. Y'all love to travel. You love to hunt. You know, 
why not, why not go for it? So uh, that's what we did. And, uh, you know, the rest, as they say, is history. That's kind of how we got started. Yeah, it was 19 years ago last month that we actually formed a company. We've been filming and hunting since 2000. So we're, we're not telling our age, but we're not young. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've been at it a while. And I, I joined Scott and Brad in 2016 as uh, just kind of came on board as a pro staffer and and just I'd been doing a lot of self filming on my own and just kind of wanted to, to, to learn more about the actual field production part, the outdoor videography and photography. So that's what, that's when I came on board and basically started in 2016 on a trip to Namibia, uh, safari hunting, hunting with Scott. And I've been with them, um, ever since on a field production standpoint. But if anybody wants to go watch this now, they can just download the Waypoint app on their smartphone or Android phone and just go search for the challenge under the digital series. And there's what, 11 or 12 shows out there. 11 right now. Yeah. Of course we'd be adding more from, from, last, yeah. from last season. So. <laughs> David, David kind of keeps us straight, you know, keeps us up Hey, did y'all forget to do that? Have you done that? Uh, like this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> so, Hilarious. Uh, good to have around. He's organized. He's <laughs> yeah. I'm probably the, the next organized, and I'm totally and unorganized, Brad, which is just a whole different ball game altogether. And, Brad, and, and Brad's our editor, so he works really, really hard. Yeah, so. Brad. Brad, does, we all do our thing, but Brad gets probably worked the hardest. And we kind of had a come to Jesus meeting a couple of years ago. We were just burning Brad out, and he wasn't really getting to, to hunt like he wanted to. And we said when we started this that if it ever took the fun out of hunting or come between our friendship, you know, we were done with it. So. Um, the friendship part really hadn't struggled through it, but it has uh, at times started to take the fun out of it. We just had to step back and say, hey, let's just go hunt and leave the cameras behind this old school. And, yeah. You know, that's just so, and, and we've, we've cut way back on sponsorships um, and going digital has allowed us to do that because it's just when you're trying to work in every sponsor that you possibly could have, I mean, you could have seven sponsors on a boat. You know, and trying to get all that footage and work them into a show, it just started making it more of a job than, than fun. So, you know, you're, you're not going to see a bunch of sponsors on our show. We're not going to be pushing sponsors down your throat. We, we, we've got we yeah, got a, we got five or six. We got five. Been, the we, one we've been with since 2004. Yeah, 2000, been with forever. And, you know, we love those guys, and they're easy to work with. They love us. And, and, and we uh, believe in the product, so we don't represent anybody that we don't right. really believe in what we're I mean, saying. You're not yeah. going to be shoot, using something for, you know, almost 20 years if you don't believe in it, you know. And, and yeah. so we just, you know, back back in the day, you know, we were doing whatever we could to put a show on. And then we got out of hand with sponsors and we wasn't able to dedicate enough time to each one of them. We're like, you know what, we need to just step back. And just build relationships with a, a close knit group, and, and that's kind of what we did. So that that kind of made it easier for me, because I was dealing more with the sponsors, and Brad was dealing with the editing. So now we've made it a little bit easier for Brad. We don't have these hard deadlines, and and our show don't have to hit at a certain time to be in and out. You know, I mean, it's taking three hours to lose a minute. You know, and it's like this is crazy. <laughs> yeah. We've been blessed when we first started. I, I did not know how to edit. We have a friend that has been in the this type of business for you know thirty years or more, and he really you know started out, but he works three or four other jobs and is doing it in his spare time. So over the years, I've just kind of sat with him and we you know learned to yeah, we, edit. So I I get it ready, and then his name's Greg Conkle. Yeah, he comes in and for sure. goes through everything, make sure it's all you know every like, little like our proofreader. Yeah, <laughs> he just, you know. He's got an eye for music, and he's like, man, that's, that's off just a half a beat there. And Brad and I are like, uh, he'll move it over. But he, he's it's a tedious tr- stuff, and he's he a, takes his job serious and does an excellent job, and we wouldn't be where we are today without him. He, 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 he's a true video audio engineer. And he, and he don't care yeah. if he don't care if he hunts when we go on the right. trips. He's like, it's, it's if you get a deer and Brad gets a deer, i got two deer because I film both of y'all. <laughs> and I didn't have to. Right. Well, I'm glad you look at it that way. That's great. Well, hey, so, yeah, <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah, so I'm getting I would, from behind. I feel like everybody in the any 
everybody who has any, even a toe in the outdoor industry, like myself, I'm a podcaster. I'm happy behind the microphone with nobody seeing my no makeup and messy hair. You know, like I have hundreds of hours of video that'll probably never see the light of day because editing is the worst. And if you are good at it, you are worth your weight in gold. I think I really, truly feel like anybody who has any even peripheral anything to do with the outdoor industry could probably say, yeah, I have tons of video that I don't know how to edit. So that's super cool that you guys have somebody in your pocket right. like that. Well, we got a face for radio or podcast. And right. Sure. sure. So, but <laughs> that's how they put it on, you know. The, the average viewer out there, just, they don't realize that for that 28-minute, 30-second show <laughs> on TV, that's, that editor probably spent 60 hours at least. Yeah, right. At least. It's more like 80 for me. That ain't including the time right. to go Yeah, seriously. Them. Right. Especially today when you're running at least one, one, you're running a main production camera, and then you're running two to three or four, or four POV different angles, and it's still mm-hmm. shooting all your B-roll. So that person's having to go through so much footage. Um, just, and there's so much on the cut room floor to get down to 28, you know, 28, 30, if you're on TV. And that's one reason why we wanted to go digital because now we're flexible on how long the, the show doesn't have to hit that in and out. You know, we can make it 10 minutes. We can make it 30 minutes. It does not matter. And it just yeah. made it a lot. Of edit. Yeah. And we have a lot of friends that have gone with us and some of the outfitters that we hunt with always comment at, it's like, I never realized how much time it took to shoot this because once we kill an animal we may spend a half a day just you know taking photos and redoing intros and you know, cutaways and you know all that kind of stuff it's, it takes hours and hours of extra time that people don't even realize after yeah. you harvest it yeah you don't want to make it so much worse that you don't enjoy the hunt and the success of it. it's a lot of times you know the camera guy just has to be running the guy we just do whatever comes natural and if we really screw up then we'll go back and you know, right. started using so it's really helped out because we can we can have two or three, four of them running the tree with a remote hanging around our neck, and we just hit record. So it's shooting us live as we're drawing our bow or glassing or whatever. And then we have a production camera that you know is being ran either by a cameraman or sometimes we're forced to film ourselves. But uh, those tactic cams make filming ourselves a lot easier for sure. Once you get them clamp, clamped on a limb or on a stake in the ground, I and mean, then you get so many different angles that cool angles. Yeah, I mean, you you put a tactic cam out in the middle of a turkey spread, or or you know, sit one next to a deer rub or something, and have you know, everything's got to come into play. Obviously, the, the animals aren't reading a script, but I mean, we lay it out there, we put it out there, they just don't read it, you know, they just walk right by it. But. Yeah. No, and that's a great idea, too. I, for the first, I don't ever, like I said, I really just don't mess with video because it's not even, I mean, it's so much time and effort and learning the tool. And I mean, Premiere Pro is such a pain in the ass or even DaVinci, whatever, whatever it is that you're using um, is so, can be so complex and cumbersome that it, but even that aside, like you have to be talented to f- put it together and make it look really nice because I've seen some 25 minute videos that are awful awful and it's a torture watching it right you know so I, so. I put a challenge out there for brad several years ago and uh, that's a wholly totally different story but we, we both had the opportunity to just kind of take this serious and uh i was like hey you know this is like god put an opportunity right out here in front of us you know it's like yeah. let's, let's go with it and yep. man he he went and bought his own computer and started hanging out with greg even more and <laughs> Next thing I know, I ran off. I mean, I'm I'm blown away by the stuff uh, that he does. You know, That's it cool. only took me twenty to get almost proficient at it. <laughs> but at least he got. <laughs> That's great. Well, let's talk a little bit. You guys had mentioned this courageous outdoor kids Inc. and courageous with a K as in kangaroo, and I don't have children, but my boyfriend has children who are very sheltered in a very non hunting environment. But the minute we take them out with us, especially turkey hunting, boy, their faces just light up and they're really engaged in it. So why don't you tell us a little bit about Courageous Outdoor Kids Inc. and how you are involved with that? 
Well, we'd be glad to. To be honest with you, um, one of our other pro staffers, uh, Joe King, he lives in Michigan and we're in Georgia. So, you know, we do a lot of telephone <laughs> conversations. We don't get to see each other in person much. But <laughs> this past year, three of us could not make it to the National Wild Turkey Federation Convention, which we normally do. But Joe did go. And uh, he went to represent and he contacted us once it was over and told me, he said, hey, I met some guys there that have something going on that I'm really excited about. I want to get involved with. I just thought I'd tell you about it. And I said, sure. What was that? And he told me it was the Courageous Outdoor Kids. And what it is, is a group of volunteers that have created an organization. And it's kind of like make a wish for turkey or not for turkey hunters, for hunters in general. It's for kids that have disabilities. Um, primarily, it's a lot of cancer patients. Sure. Um, some dealing with it. Some have recovered from it. And unfortunately, they've lost a few of them. Mm-hmm. But they're trying to grant wishes to these kids to take them on different hunts around the country for deer, bear, ducks, turkeys, which is what we were involved with. And uh, they just make sure the kids, the kids and the family don't pay anything. They all do it on donations and um, they sell a few things, you know, koozies and hats and T-shirts and stuff. But uh, they all volunteer their time. A lot of the landowners volunteer their property. And it's just a really great organization and it's growing very, very fast. Their their ultimate dream is to have a chapter in every state. Hmm. They're right in Georgia. And uh, they're over near Dublin, and they've got several landowners, thousands of acres that uh, these landowners have, uh, you know, went in and set up ground blinds and trimmed lanes and brushed in blinds to get get the area ready. So, you know, these kids, because I mean, you're talking about, you know, heck, five to twelve year olds, you know, really, and uh, you know, they're not they're not accustomed to moving when the Turkey's not looking and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it, it can be really difficult, but these landowners that went out there not only, you know, dedicated their, their property for it, but also their their time into getting their property ready, you know, have food plots in. And, and uh, it was, I think there was five turkeys killed out of, what, 35 kids or something like that. Um, but, you know, the kid I took out, he missed and had a couple other opportunities that, that, um, you know, been an adult, there would have been another bird or two killed. They just, he just wasn't moving towards the gobble. And uh, we got caught out in a rainstorm one time, and it was actually hailing, and they just kept sitting, you know. <laughs> but uh, David's kid killed, and yeah. I think Brad had the one I was with Brad killed as well. You know, yeah. so there was a lot of opportunities, and uh, everybody heard birds, and we were fired up about it to just go be part of it, you know. And, and we got over there, and I think I can speak for each one of them, including Joe. Uh, you know, we left being more touched than we probably could even imagine. And, you know, you're doing this to help the kids, but, you know, you kind of come out of there like, man, them, them guys helped me out, you know, because I complain about my back or my leg or pulled a hamstring, and it's like, man, these kids are dealing with cancer. Shut up, you know. And then, like you said, they were there and they were every morning they were up early they were smiling laughing playing yeah. percent of them you never know they were dealing with a life-threatening issue you know and uh it was just really was neat that the people volunteered it was a three-day event i mean restaurants donated food and the, all the guides volunteered their time and we were fortunate enough that they allowed us to come over and, and film it and we're going to uh, try to make up a little promotional thing for them and just kind of spread the word because it's just a really great organization and people are doing it for the right reasons. It's faith-based and they're just not, uh, they're not making any money. Almost everything that's donated pays for the kids to be able to do that. That's so, that's they, so you know, cool. They, uh, they have a Facebook page, like you said, you know, with a K courageous outdoor kids slash Inc. That, um, I'm sure they would love to build that page up and, and on there, they, they have, uh, some places where I think you can pick up some products if you want to help out or make a donation or even, I mean, I know you, you're probably being heard all over the country. There might be yeah. some people out there who want to start their own chapter, you know, that cancer, sure. touch them, they, or, uh, they have the ability, they have some land that they might want to, uh, 
and and it's not donated for the whole season. It's just for a week of deer season, week week of turkey, whatever. Usually what? just youth season, which is before. Yeah, yeah I was just gonna say right because a lot of times here. Oh my God! This year, for whatever reason, our turkeys were fired up by like April first. By now, they're like, yeah, we're not interested anymore. <laughs> and that that youth weekend, so many kids killed turkeys. I was so jealous. The yeah, um. Yeah. I'm sure that there are lots of farmers more than happy to kill these turkeys that keep eating oh, up yeah. their seeds. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we hunted two days, and the weather wasn't our friend, no. but the turkeys were on fire. I mean, we heard they, more goblin days than we did the whole, the whole, season. Season. <laughs> the whole, the whole <laughs> season. But you know, my uh, the kid that I was with that ended up killing. I mean, this is a kid that has survived brain cancer. And has had his right. his his skull, his head shaved, and his skull split wide open two or three times. And he's fifteen, about to turn sixteen years old. But you would you'd never know it. He has he does have a lot of issues from the radiation treatments and those types of things. Like he can't his body can't regulate. Is he the one that actually created some of those koozies and stuff? Yeah, he did that, but he, he can't, his body can't regulate temperature, so he doesn't know when he's hot or cold, mm, any sure. of that. But, but you know, what, what impressed me most about, about Hunter, his name was Hunter Vermillion, and he's it's, it's got great parents, um, was we hunted uh, one day. He killed them after day one, the afternoon hunt of day one, but um, that morning we had turkeys all around us, but... He sat perfectly still, he sat perfectly quiet, and he never got on his phone, which, you know, <laughs> you're asking a lot of 16-year-old. Right. He, he, he was serious about Did it. Did you get on your phone, baby? Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but part, of it, part of it was I had to get on my phone because where the turkeys came in, I couldn't get the production camera on it, so I had to actually film the kill with my phone. It's just sure. one of the things that happens in a ground blind when you got <laughs> when you got when you got two adults and one kid in a ground blind is made for two and the turkey come in behind you and not anywhere where you were set up to film you got one little window that he's got to shoot and I got to film so um, but but we we managed to to work it out and he 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 hung in there and didn't shoot until I told him to but that's just the kind of kids that you know or part of this part of this mission and they had like you said they probably had 30 or 35 kids yeah. at, at that turkey hunt 33 to 35 and they had 40 people there that could yeah with a guide to guide so i mean it was an unbelievable event like scott said i think, I think we all took more out of it than, than the kids when and we're we're definitely we told them when we left that you know if they needed anything any of our time whether it's deer hunting or turkey hunting we yeah you know, if we're not we're traveling the hand, we're we're all about it. yeah we're all about we it. check all the boxes ducks hogs yeah deer they do bear hunts yeah, yeah they bear do all hunts. kinds of stuff I mean we're not big and we don't get to hunt them that often but no. anything yeah. anything dealt with especially you know if we can tag along with the camera. And, capture some of these moments if nothing else just for the parents to have later you know of course that's so cool this yeah our really main neat. our main goal too though was make sure that us trying to film it didn't take the fun away. out of our cost yeah we, 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 sure. we, we told them we said look we'll be in the background if we can get it we'll get it but do not let us film in it mess it up for the kid but those kids were all into it man they were loving it <laughs> felt like they were rock stars i guess that's so cool. Well, yeah, how often do you get to have, I don't know, how often do you even get this opportunity, much less be able to have a bunch of cool TV guys film it for you? Like, how awesome is that? Yeah, they had their they had their dads and their grand step-granddads in there with them. Yeah. yeah. That's so cool. We're old guys, I guess. That's really I remember neat. I, first time I ever took a kid hunting that was on a youth hunt, that one of our WMAs around here and, and he ended up killing a deer and man, I was so proud of that deer and you know, it wasn't even my kid, you know, I got probably got a little emotional and I was like, Man, when my son ever kills a deer, I don't know how I'm gonna handle it, you know. And then taking some kids out there that are, you know, struggling with you know, real life situations and see them like I said, my the kid I went with, he wasn't successful, but 
he had an opportunity. We found he, he did hit the turkey, but we found out later that his older brother had sighted it in with birdshot and never ran any turkey loads through it. So had he had been sighted in with the right load, he probably would have had him a turkey the first 20 minutes of the first day. But he was smiling the whole the whole trip, you know. And every time we'd hear gobble, man, he was grinning ear to ear. So that that vision is burned into my memory for sure. Yeah, very very cool. Is it just um so? And I'm not on their website, and I apologize if if you already did mention this. But so they have a chapter in Georgia, and what other states do they have a chapter in? Yeah, they. I think this is their second, going on their third year, so they're new. Just in Georgia, but, right? For not, right now. Yeah, in Georgia okay. right now. But said they've well, been talking to some people in South Carolina or okay. maybe Tennessee. Okay. But well, hopefully, going, hopefully by this time next year they'll have ten states covered. Exactly. Well, with people like yourself getting the word out, you know, sure. It just don't. It don't take but one or two people, and this thing will just take the, off. The, the kid that I was turkey hunting with though was from Tennessee, so he wasn't a Georgia kid. So they'll take kids from other states now. You just got to be willing. The parents got to be willing to bring the kid to wherever wherever right. the hunt's taking place. Yeah, and, you know, it doesn't, like this guy here with his kid. You know, he's up there. And, going back and telling everybody what an experience it was for his kid. And then next thing you know, he's just done a little fire under him because he had a great experience. He liked, he liked how the organization was ran. And, and then he talks to four or five people. And next thing you know, there's a chapter going on up there. So that's, that's kind of how it gets started. So anything we can do to help. And I appreciate you uh, allowing us to talk about it because, uh, it's definitely something well worth it, and anybody that gets involved in it, I think they're gonna they're gonna be blessed. Yeah, of course. And, and they did have people from all over because I know Joe's uh, kid was they were from Arizona, so I mean they flew all the way to Georgia from Arizona just to they, go. They they pay for them to stay at a nice hotel. I don't know if they pay for travel. I mean, you know, money's limited, especially in their they're going on their second into the third the, year. They most of the food. No. Yeah, all, yeah, all the, the, food. They all the food. They, everybody had a place to stay, but I don't know if they were able to pay plane tickets and all that kind of stuff. Sure. You know? But just to, you know, you get here, we'll take care of everything else. That's pretty good, you know? Yeah. Well, very cool, guys. So what do we have coming down the pipe for the Challenge Outdoors, say, in the next year? Or two. What do you guys got coming up for this season, or what can viewers expect when they download the Waypoint um, <laughs> app and they watch your TV show? <laughs> well, the the shows that are coming up to this season obviously were filmed last year, but we're uh, deer hunting in Wyoming and, and in Kansas and Illinois, Michigan, turkey Florida. hunting in Florida and Michigan, and. Uh, Scott and I are leaving in about a month to head to South Africa again. So we'll be over there for a couple of weeks filming some Africa hunting. So we're excited about that. And then, of course, next fall we'll be doing deer hunts in three or four different states as well. So uh, Alligator hunt. Yeah. So we've got, yeah, we have an alligator hunt coming up this year as well to be starting to air this summer. So uh, we got a little bit of everything on. We stay pretty busy between spring and, and uh fall and then of course you throw in africa trips and that takes mm. care of the summer yeah <laughs> you, got, you got season and then you got editing season yeah oh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah you're, you're six weeks that you actually get to hunt in the rest of the, <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know, the other 45 weeks or whatever it's all work but to edit the six weeks of hunting yeah yeah you know, but we'll probably yeah. get two or two to three shows out of africa at probably least. at least okay. Um, then we always have Kansas whitetails, Wyoming whitetails, Georgia whitetails, hopefully yeah. Illinois whitetails. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we don't always have Kansas whitetails. We used to always yeah. have. Now it's, it's, it's like every other year. Every year they're all out there. Yeah. yeah. COVID is the best and worst thing to ever happen yeah. in hunting. And I think a lot of guys realize that, hey, man, we can travel out of yeah. state to hunt. We never never had to used to worry about Wyoming, and now you have to worry about getting drawn in Wyoming. Yeah. Um, to worry about getting drawn in Kansas. looks like it's going to be an every other year type of thing for us now. Um, which you don't take us here locally yeah. two years every other year we're getting drawn on WMA in Georgia now it's like every third year every three or four years yeah, yeah. 
I love but, Kansas. I, I, I've turkey hunted there a couple of times. One of my all time favorite turkey hunt ever in my life was in Kansas on the old ammunition depot down there, um, on the Osage. Yeah. And I mean, literally my favorite hunt ever. And it looks like I was thinking about going back there next spring and they were like, yeah, the turkey numbers are pretty low. So I'm like, damn it. Now yeah, I gotta find a new place. Get but, two turkeys in Kansas where we hunt it now. They can only shoot one. The yeah. western part or two, but most of the eastern part is is one only. Yeah. Yeah. We actually get, got kind of spoiled going to Kansas for deer and turkey. So when you do that for ten or twelve years in a row, then you come <laughs> back to Georgia, and you're like, eh, I think I'll just go back out there. <laughs> yeah, so much totally. There twice a year. Yeah, we can go go hunt two birds and shoot a monster buck possibly and. And we, we've made great friends out there with the farmers and, and some other uh, couples out there. They come they come down here now and visit with us. And That's so fun. hunting those those open up a lot of doors and we've met some incredible people and we can say we got friends all over the country and Canada and Africa. So yeah. but but turkey numbers are down across the yeah. country. I know. Uh, Probably because and, there's uh, like 93,000 freaking raccoons on everybody's lease. My trail cameras well, are nothing but effing yeah. raccoons and skunks and possums. And the owner won't let me let anybody on there to trap or anything. And I'm like, you're killing me, dude. You're killing me. Yeah. Dave and I have been doing some trapping on our farm. Yeah, you know, here in Georgia. You know, it's going to take a few years to see any results, if any. Yeah. But there, I read some numbers the other day off of the page and... They it's they awful. pretty much get every state and it was depressing. Yeah. But raccoons were right up there near the top as part of the problem. And so it all goes back to the fur trade. They're they're not worth anything. Right. So, so nobody traps anymore. Yeah, but who's gonna spend that time and money for traps and gas yeah. running around to try to catch and you know, these guys would catch a hundred coons, you know, and mm-hmm. in a week. Now they're not catching any. Right. Yeah, we're we're in West Central Georgia, the Piedmont area, and which is where you know, the best turkey hunting in the state was for years and years and years. And I'd probably say our turkey population is off 50 to 60 percent. I mean, it's way off. Really? Way, way off. And you have some very large, well-known celebrity landowners in the county that we're in. That have some very popular hunting TV shows. We won't name names, but uh, <laughs> that that hunt, you know, within fifteen or twenty minutes of Scott and I's places, and they're they're struggling as well. I mean, their numbers are way off. So, yeah. and they have thousands of acres. So, you know, just it, we. I hope I hope the biologists figure it out pretty quick because they've made a lot of changes in Georgia. They cut our bag limit down. They moved our our seasons back on on, pub, on private and, and public land, so they're 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 trying to figure it out. But the bag limit probably need to change ten years ago. Yeah, they were a little mm-hmm. behind. But um, yeah, the birds are in pockets. So if you just if your land just if it happens to be in one of those pockets, you think the turkey hunt's pretty good, but mm-hmm. you may have to go twenty or thirty miles to find the next pocket, and there's right. none in between. Yeah, that, for real. Yeah, that that that's the problem. I mean, Scott and I, between the two of us, probably walked a hundred miles this season in Georgia. Um, probably, I think we were on six or seven different WMAs, three or four different counties, and we really didn't have a good morning, really, that you could say we got on birds until yeah. May fifth, yeah. which was like May fifth. The season went out on May fifteenth. <laughs> before we got on a on morning where we had five different birds gobbling on the roost. I mean, we had to walk far and on that many different WMAs. That's crazy. I mean, they were they were ghost towns because on a lot of these tracks, we weren't hearing turkeys, we weren't seeing turkeys, and we weren't cutting any turkey side. They had either. to gobble twice when we recognized it as a gobble. Yeah, we, we were like, was that a gobble? Yeah, we could, you know, we were like... Late season, public land, we're like, hey, no way that's a gobble. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, and uh, it's just you just have to be willing to 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 put in the time and that much effort now in, in a lot of parts of Georgia, especially on public land, to find a turkey. I mean, it's just and there's just so many more turkey hunters on public land now. Oh yeah, 
Yeah. So, you know, the, popularity, the popularity. Yep, has yeah. just exploded. Yeah, YouTube, you know, and mm-hmm. with all the, the, the turkey hunting shows that show you, you know, everybody traveling all over the country hunting public land. Well, now everybody and their brothers hunting public land. So we killed on public in 2020. We went to the only road that didn't have a truck parked on it, went in there and killed a turkey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, we're talking more than one truck. We're talking two or three trucks. During the week, yeah. but it was during. Nobody had nobody was worried because, but I right. think a lot of those never hunted. They're like, man, this is pretty fun. I mean, which is great for hunting. I'm not knocking that. No, but you know, I know because it's a double edged sword because people are always like, oh, we have to have hunter retention, get new hunters out there, blah 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 blah. But then you have more pressure. So I don't know. It's it's stealing from Peter to pay Paul when it comes to that. Like, of course, we want to grow the industry. We want people. The more people involved in hunting, the better it is. But the more okay. people involved in hunting means the more animals killed, which means less animals overall. I mean, it's just, it's a crazy it's, balancing act. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a challenge. I mean, yeah. we have public all over the country. I mean, I think a lot of people hear a TV show and they think we're just hunting private land or with outfitters. And yes, we do some of that. But we're hunting public in every state that we go to. And we spend just as much time hunting the hunters as we do hunting the game. Right. Yes, so, exactly. Not crazy. You yeah. have to learn that you know, on, on bad hunting days, it's like, well, let's just go and, and see where people are hunting so you can kind of avoid those areas or yeah, or work with people. And, and that's, a, that's to me, I love that challenge of, you know, not only trying to figure the animals out, but trying to figure out what another guy may be doing that yep. may push deer towards you or hey you got to go in a different way or you know this place ain't big enough let these guys have it or whatever but um it, it's uh i like seeing new places so i like i love hunting public land because you can walk different land everywhere you go yeah, i mean Me that, that morning that scott killed that turkey on on the wma in georgia it was open to the public that morning and we're only talking a 4500 acre tract it probably had well over a hundred hunters on it, well over a hundred. Wow. And we went to plan A, trucks, B, C, D. We finally, <laughs> we, we had, we had one guy cut us off. We had one guy cut us off, so, so we, we just let him have, let him have oh it. Went to plan E, couldn't believe there wasn't a truck at that gate. But as we're walking down this road, there were there were boot tracks that guy, there, everywhere. I was trying to scuff out all the gobbler tracks in the road. Yeah, but uh, and this guy mark out every gobbler track. It made it more obvious. That, you know, man, somebody broke their leg. They're, they're dragging their foot. But, right. but it was the only place that you know didn't have a truck. And you know when we looked at this part that we were going to look at, I was like, it was basically a one mile walk back in to where we needed to go. And that was it. It didn't loop back out. So you're walking a mile in to hope to get on a turkey. And if you don't hear anything, you're just, you're then walking one mile back through where you've already been. And, uh, we just got, we got lucky and walked in that mile and I called and he cut me off and I called again and he cut me off. And then, uh, Scott had to do a little Mohicum sneakum and, uh, he kind of, he wasn't leaving a hen. So he had to kind of crawl on him and, and to get him in range and kill him. But, yeah, you know, that was that was the only shot that morning, and the only bird killed on that track that morning with you know a hundred different guys running around it. But that just shows you, you know, kind of what you got to be willing to do when you're when you're on public ground now in a lot of these states with just so many other hunters out there. What did you say? Like twenty two birds that year, and now they're averaging about six. No, yeah. they're killing less than five on a track that they used to kill over twenty a year. Twenty two. Right. No, we were the last turkey. That was the last turkey killed off that track that year. And was that like morning? Week three. Yeah, week and, three of the season. And now, ever since then, they're they're shooting like they like killed three or four. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have You that's know, I and I, I obviously I don't have. I mean, I don't have a TV show, so I don't have the motivation to get out as much as you guys do. But like, like I was killing a turkey a year up until about four five years ago. And I got one in the last five years. I was like, I don't know what the heck is going on here, but this sucks. You know, like you yeah. just, 
it's just you're having to work harder. Like you said, you're having to put more miles, and it's just it's a different game than it was 10 years ago even. Yeah. When we first started going out west, I mean, you could you could knock on a farmer's house and, you know, have him come to the door and ask for turkey rights, and, you know, they're like, you shoot all them three-toed SOBs you see, and, yep. of course, we're like, shoot every one of them. We'll shoot all 50 <laughs> right. of them. It's a big in a shotgun shell, and of course you won't do it, but you know you you just tell them that to make them happy because they they plant 400 yards of corn and turn the combine around, and 50 yards from them there's a flock of 60, 80 turkeys eating what they just planted. I mean, they don't like them. Yeah. But that they're not turning the you know we even go out there and talk to them. They're like, man, we're just not seeing you know still shoot every one you see, but we're still them. not seeing them like we used to, you know. Well, see, and I'm running into the whole, like, sure, you can, but I'm going to need $200 or I'm going to need 150 bucks or whatever, where it used to be no problem, just get them out of here. But now I don't, and I don't know if it's the advent of things like Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace, where it's just a little more, I don't know, in everybody's face that, you know, well, if you have turkeys or deer or whatever on your farm, and even though you don't hunt, you could make a good chunk of change off of somebody if they're door knocking, but I have found a lot more of that lately as well. We've been just, fortunate these landowners, we've just, they're friends, you know I mean? Yeah. And Chris Parts and, They've actually you know, turned down people offering to pay to lease their land. Like, no, we got some friends in Georgia come on in. They turn down money. <laughs> on that free. We're just That's so awesome. blessed. And, That's you know, really I cool. Know, I don't know if it's just because I mean, I hope it's a lot of because they just like us. I mean, obviously they do. Right. So I think we respect their land, you know. We 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 leave gates open if they were open. We close gates. We we pick up trash that may not even be. We ours. help them do chores if they need yep. it. Or, or, and it's you know we we go into town and spend a week there. We take them out to eat a couple of times and bring yeah. the wife. And, but uh, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's all about making those relationships and connections. Right, it's not all about hunting, you know, mm-hmm. especially when you get crazy. Like, we got to take in. We used to be so go, 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 you know. We'd ride 20 miles past, past Mount Rushmore and never stop to see it, you know. It's like, to, right. this is the year we're going, you know. I mean, we're 20 miles from it. Let's go. So, yeah. So, trying to take advantage of more opportunities like that. And I just get so caught up Experience on. the whole, yeah thing not just the killing part it's all about the experience of the hunt and nature and making friends and doing something you know outside and we're past the part of just wanting to just kill all the time it's more about the whole experience of the trip oh yeah i always say whenever you go on a hunt if you can take a day and play tourist not only does it break up the the haunting part of it so it's not so much of a grind but right that i mean You're spending all this money to, especially when you're hunting out of state and there are everywhere you go, there are amazing things to see and great restaurants to eat at and stuff. And it's, while I love to hunt seven days of hunting straight and I would be like, so I'm just going to go home now and cry (laughs) in exhaustion. You know, you need to break it up and, and stop and smell the flowers a little bit too. It's rough. You know, you go out, we go on a turkey tour and it could be, 21 days long, and we're trying to cover four or five states. That's a lot yeah. of days. Secretly, you're, you're praying and for it's, rain the next right. one. And right. It's sleeping. Totally. And it, it, it's a grind because we're trying to fill, t- unfortunately, you know, when we're in that film mode, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's tag out, move, tag out, move. Tag, you know, we're trying to tag out as fast as we can on to the next state. Tag out as fast as we can. And that can become a grind and a chore and can become hard to slow down and enjoy what we're really out, out there to do. So we, in the last few years, we've slowed, we, we have consciously slowed down and, and, and not done that or tried not to do that. Like you say, take a day where we just, we're not hunting. We're just mm-hmm. tourists. And, yeah. Um, because it's just, it, it can work, especially turkey hunt, man, because well, good Lord, that's, it, the days are so long. You're, you're up to get four or five hours sleep. Yeah, you're right. Up two weeks. Oh, you're, you're up exhausted. Depending on what part of the country you're in, you could be up to three or four. <laughs> and you're yep. so tired. Especially <laughs> later in the season, you're like, oh my god, it's so early. Yeah. 
Well, thank God we're going to Missouri. You can only hunt till one. one. Yeah. <laughs> You're blessing in, in disguise. <laughs> um, and we're covering from Georgia to Kansas or Maine and then Wyoming. Oh, and then my back God, yeah. The yeah, Florida. I mean, we're covering the four corners of the, of the of the country, and it can become a grind. Thousands yeah. of miles on the road. But when you got three of us, it's, it's you know it's pretty fun. But um, we 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 can become road warriors. But and that's what the people on TV, <laughs> the people, the viewers, they don't they don't really get a sense of that or see that part of it. That no. that grind. The thousands of miles we're driving. And the fact that we're hunting 20 turkey tour, turkeys, we might be hunting 18 to 19 hours a day. If yeah. we showed you all the non exciting stuff, right? You, you'd never turn the TV on, right? Oh, I know, so, I know. I love TV, a lot you guys, of it, with uh, your hunting oh. shows, but sometimes I'm like, you'll get these new hunters and they're like, oh, I don't understand. It's my first year, my second year hunting, and I hunted a whole four days and I don't understand why I haven't killed a turkey. I'm like, <laughs> You have no idea. Right. <laughs> yeah. well, that's, why, that's why you like to, you know, go to places like Africa where it's a target-rich environment. Totally. Yeah, right? You might not yeah. get everything on your bucket list, so to speak, but you're going to have something to come back with for your effort and the money, you know. Like, you go you go on an elk hunt, you might go six or seven elk hunts and never kill an elk. But you go to Africa and you got a kudu and Paula Warthog, you might get a kudu and a spring buck and a hiker or something you know you, you're gonna have something to remember the trip by yeah you're, you're gonna have plenty of opportunities you'll have opportunities every sit so that's that's yes, the they great don't thing ask you over there if you saw anything like when you get back from deer camp no. they say what did you see <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. We, if you're never been to africa we, we highly recommend a, a trip so yeah totally all right, Jenna, and well, we've completely gone over time, but that's okay. I don't care. This is a very fun conversation. So why don't we tell the listeners, I will, of course, link to all all your social media channels and where they can find you and watch your TV show in the show notes at huntfishtravel.com. But why don't you give the rundown of where they can find you other than the app that they should download right now if you're not driving um, so they can watch your TV show. <laughs> Why don't you tell them where they can find you? Yeah. Our social media is, uh, you know, Instagram, the challenge outdoors and uh, on Facebook, the challenge outdoors. And in the bio on Instagram, you can see uh, where you can watch us, but Brandon, give you a rundown real quick. Yeah. Again, the waypoint TV is they're streaming on Samsung TV, Pluto, Sling, Vizio, Fubo, Tubi, Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, etc. I mean, there's plenty of places you can can catch Waypoint yeah. TV, and our shows will be starting in early July. Excellent. Friday, six after in the afternoon, and Tuesdays at eleven or eleven thirty. They're still trying to work out which of those bounds a.m. Awesome. And your website, of course, is always acceptthechallengetv.com. And like yep. I said, I will, and I'll also link to, of course, the Courageous Outdoor Kids dot org yep. as well in the show notes. So please do. Yes. All right, gentlemen. Well, I very much appreciate you coming on the show. And as soon as this goes live, I will tag you all and let you know that it's available for your listening pleasure. Well, well thank you. thank you so much for inviting us to be on. It's been yeah. a pleasure. I yeah, appreciate same your time. Here. Of course. All right. You guys have a great evening then. Thank you so much. Thank you. You too. Okay. Bye-bye.